So guys, I thought I'd do a little update video for all of you because there actually hasn't been any uploads this week. And uh, yeah, I thought I'd do a little update as well as show you my new camera setup. So let's get into that right now. First of all, let me, might as well just show you my old one, what I was working with before. All right, we're coming into my kitchen. All right guys, so one thing about my kitchen is it's got some pretty dope storage. So <laughs> I can put, you know, all my coffee capsules, get all my supplements, shit like that. Uh, but then I can also put my camera equipment. So I actually put a lot of my camera equipment in my kitchen right next to condiments and whatnot. Um, all right, so this is the Sony A7 Mark II. I used this for roughly a year and a half. Um, kind of beat up in some places. As you can see, screen is kind of scratched and whatnot. Um, but yeah, this is what I used for like a year and a half to create most of my content. That, as well as what you're looking at right now, which is the RX100 Mark IV. But um, yeah, this uh, served me well. I have no idea what the hell I'm actually gonna do with this at this point. Um, maybe give it to a friend or something like that or use it as like a second angle camera. I've got a bunch of shit in here. I've also got like, right here, I have a Mavic actually, uh, right there. Never ever use this thing unless I'm traveling. I get some cool drone shots. Uh, wireless receivers, bunch of GoPro, like, honestly, I just, I have a bunch of crap, like, the, I have so much camera equipment that I, I never use now that, now that I don't really do content for my clients, um, yeah, there's not a single client that I shoot content for, I used to shoot a lot of content, uh, my, my hourly rate was 200 an hour, so it was profitable, you know, um, it, it's, it's definitely a good business to get into. Um, but yeah, like no matter what, I, I just, I don't shoot content at all anymore. Um, so that is why I have a bunch of equipment and whatnot, uh, but I barely ever use it. So let's get up, let's get into the new setup. So this is the RX100 Mark III, or what am I saying? No, it's the uh, Sony uh, A7R Mark III. As you can see, Mark III, and uh, it's attached to a uh, 24 to 70 uh, millimeter lens, uh, which I've had this for a while. Uh, by the way, guys, little like disclaimer, if you don't give a fuck about cameras, just go and skip to where I sit on the couch, uh, and I'm, I'll be doing a life update there. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna be talking about cameras for a little bit. So if you're looking to start YouTube or something like that, maybe stick around. Uh, but yeah, this is the RX, I keep saying that, it's the Sony um, uh, A7R Mark III. Uh, and then I got this, which is basically, it's a small HD uh, monitor. So basically it's touchscreen monitor allows me to actually frame and compose my shot properly, uh, which was, which is kind of missing from the, um, you know, from this camera because I mean, well, that's pretty much as, as far as it can go. So there were a bunch of times where, you know, I'd sit down, do my thing, only to find out that it was overexposed, underexposed, I was out of frame, the autofocus was out of whack and shit like that. So um, yeah, that is the new setup. The body only, so the A7R 3 the body itself uh, cost me 3,200 pounds, which is $3,800. And then the monitor, uh, that cost me another 600 pounds, which is $800. Overall, um, the, you know, the new additions were four, roughly four and a half thousand dollars. And then the lens is also another 600 pounds, which is $800. So roughly like a, what is that? Like 5.3, 5.4K. Uh, set up uh, in dollars, uh, so quite expensive, plus obviously all the audio equipment, you know, my lav mics and stuff takes it to easily past five and a half thousand dollars. So the stuff gets expensive, but you know, I like I make my money back on this tenfold, so you don't exactly need to do this. Uh, it's just something I kind of decide to. All right guys, so we're Jay chilling out on my couch now, but um, yeah, as I was saying, you don't need to get some sort of fancy setup like this, but um, it pays for itself tenfold. We're actually using the A7R Mark III now um, with the, the lav mic and the everything set up. Anyways, a um, little update as to what's been up with my life and whatnot. Um, honestly, I haven't had a focused month since probably October, you know, November, the f entire month I was working on the fewer systems campaign, uh, which we'll touch on in a little bit. December, I was moving into, you know, my new crib, um, setting, uh, doing a lot of like accounting work and stuff like that. 
uh, in December I had a lot of like personal stuff that was just uh, kind of fucking with me. Um, yeah, I mean, I haven't really had like a proper solid focus month in a while. Um, and that's what next, next month will be. So, you know, everyone like says like, you know, next month or like next year, or, like everything's going to another level. Um, but like, hopefully with you guys or like, hopefully you guys know with me when I say something, I mean it. Um, so yeah, uh, basically, uh, no uploads for the next few days, um, because I've been working on other projects. Uh, and then I'll shoot some stuff for next week. I'm actually going to Paris. Uh, Paris is like my favorite city, except for London. I'm taking my girlfriend to Paris for New Year's and my birthday. My birthday is on the 3rd of January. Um, I finally turned 18, even though <laughs> I get so many jokes of like, uh, even my business partner, uh, my business mentors, my business partner, um, like friends, they're like, they genuinely think I'm like, like 23 like I, I get people who um who think like it's a marketing ploy um like telling people that i'm like 17 but um that would have been pretty funny if i had pulled that off but uh yeah so going on that trip when i come back uh the main focus next month is restructuring my marketing agency um it's pretty automized at this point but like fully fully automized so it's going to be broken up into two sections one that's fully fully automized i mean like I have things handled right now where it takes you maybe like four hours of work a week, maybe two to four hours of work a week on average, my marketing agency. Yeah, probably closer to four hours um, of like real, real work. Then there's other stuff that you do on the side. But if I needed it to be like probably around four hours um, and that's where it's at right now, you know, so I want to take that four hours, turn it into maybe like an hour a week. Um, for that part of the marketing agency and then I want to do more commission-based stuff. So the retainer part of the agency, um, I want to just like take it to a ridiculous level. Um, and then I'll, I want to take on more commission-based stuff um, where there's just infinite upside. I'm not getting paid anything. I'm getting paid based on results because I'll be honest guys, like doing retainer clients gets pretty fucking boring because like if you're, if you're okay, like if you're okay at what you do, then it's just every month is just kind of like the same. You just, you keep the, you keep the results coming in and stuff like that. And it's just guaranteed income. And like, I mean, like if someone gave me the option and went, Iman, like you have, I will give you guaranteed income of a million in 2018, even though a million is my goal income, I would still say no. I'm the type of person where like, I have to not know if I know what the outcome is, I'm just, I just get bored. So um, yeah, so that's my marketing agency restructuring uh, personal brand, just putting even more emphasis on it because guys, I think at this point, you know, the power of a personal brand. Um, and I mean, this, this isn't work to me. Like, you know, I joke around with people like when I make YouTube videos, like, don't get me wrong. Building a personal brand is not easy. It's very, very time consuming, but I, like still in my head, I still am wondering how, it's like a legitimate business. I, obviously I understand how it is, but like, you know, like I made nine, I, I, I had a big sale as you guys know, around like 10 days ago. Um, now we're at like 98 influencer Ignite students. Uh, overall for my personal brand, I've made over anywhere from 90 to a hundred thousand dollars. I still need to tally up in the last 80 to 90 days, you know? So like in the last three months, I've, I've literally made roughly a hundred thousand dollars for my personal brand, which is crazy, crazy stuff. Um, so obviously looking to scale that, uh, to another level. Um, so yeah, personal brand marketing agency, um, then, uh, Furo systems. Yep. All right. So the Furo systems campaign, now the Furo systems campaign, I told you guys a little bit about, um, the reason I don't want to like go into it in too much detail is because there's another like 25 days or so and anything can happen, but basically a little update. Um, the Furo systems campaign has been a complete fucking failure so far. Like just astronomical failure like and we're all scratching our heads you know obviously i was in charge of the marketing the creation you know i actually shot the, the full video um i'll leave a link to the campaign down below uh, so you can kind of check where it's at you can check the the campaign video and stuff like that so i did all the creative stuff all the marketing stuff all the email stuff etc um and i was pretty excited for that you know i collected six thousand emails for roughly six thousand three hundred pounds and these aren't like some like fluky leads, like these are solid emails, right? We were getting roughly a 30% open rate, um, which is pretty standard. Um, and very, very few people were actually falling off the subscriber list. Um, and we actually got like 30, 40 people 
reply back to emails with no prompt going like, dude, like I can't wait to purchase this, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, Indiegogo, and we're, all, we're also in talks with Indiegogo because they could tell like this was a solid, solid campaign. Um, they were telling us, you know, you, 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 you could probably expect roughly a 5% conversion off a strong mailing list. Um, so I know they're probably full of shit. So I, in my head, I was going for 1% in the next, in the first five days or so. So 1% of 6,000, let's just call it 6,000. Um, that's 60, 60 times the bike, the, uh, there's two bikes actually, the, um, you know, the average of them is roughly a K and a half, you know, 60 times a K and a half. That's what, like 90,000 in the first, in the first like, um, five days, you know? And as I said, I'm legally not allowed to tell you guys how much percentage of that I was getting. I put no money forward. I didn't spend any money on ad costs. I didn't put any money forward for anything else uh, in terms of the campaign. Um, and I got a certain percentage or I'm getting a certain percentage for, you know, in managing the entire content, the marketing, stuff like that. Um, and yeah, I'll be honest, like in my head, I thought I was going to do roughly half a million. And if it, you know, if it did half a million, then my payday when the campaign ends end of January would be quite nice. You know, it'd be quite a good start to, to 2018. But the campaign is roughly sitting on 28,000 right now, which is an astronomical failure, like a failure of just ridiculous proportions. And we have no idea what the fuck's going on. It's one of the, it's generally like, I have no idea what the fuck's going on. Like I've tried everything at this point. And so of this, the two founders and the, you know, one of the roommates of one of the founders, he actually did a crowdfunding campaign earlier this year and he ended up raising 600,000 uh, US dollars. And um, he doesn't even know what's going on. Like no one knows what the fuck's going on because the campaign is super solid. The email leads are super solid. Uh, if it's, you know, some of the issues are right now, uh, if you go look at Google Trends, now is historically the worst, like the time when people are just not looking for e-bikes uh, on the market um, because it's fucking like winter, it's raining and shit like that. Uh, people just aren't looking for e-bikes. And it's one of those things so far where it looks like amazing product, great marketing, terrible timing. And the market just doesn't want it right now. Um, they're the first fully uh, folding carbon e-bikes and stuff like that. Um, but kind of the model with um, uh, crowdfunding campaigns is it you know you don't deliver the bikes until all the money's collected, so it's it's very low risk. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of an update where I'm at. I will report back. To, I will give you guys a full case study of the Fuero Systems campaign. Actually, I'll give you guys a full case study in my new social media marketing uh, course, which is the last thing I need to mention. Uh, social media marketing course coming out in 30 days or so. It's called Six Figure SMMA. How to make six figures from social media marketing. You guys obviously know I'm obsessed with that six figure mark. Um, and yeah, that's super exciting. I'll do a full case study on there because as I said, right now it's sitting on 28,000, but it could easily jump up to a million dollars. Basically, you know, uh, everyone Indiegogo themselves have been saying like January, if you can um, hold back on your ad budget. Now we're spending roughly 50, 50 pounds a day just to, you know, get that first connection with people or get that first impression with people. Then we're going to run shit tons of retargeting ads in January. Um, yeah, basically they're like, look, hold off your budget. And then in January, go hard. And if it, if it, you know, if nothing happens, then honestly it was wrong timing. Uh, market just doesn't want it right now. So uh, I'll do a full case study of that in the course. Um, I've been writing out some of the material for the course. It looks like there's gonna be roughly 100 plus modules. I'm giving you guys my sales scripts, my partner program, uh, internal documents that I have for me and my team. I'm giving you guys access to my team. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have it so that you guys are, everyone who's in the course, um, because here's the thing, I have a good personal brand, but I'm expecting in the first year maybe 500 odd students in the course. Um, so I'm literally gonna give you guys five to 10 graphic designers that you can contact. I'm gonna give you, give you guys five to 10 um, uh, web designers that you can contact, five to 10 content creators that you can contact, five to 10 sales guys that you can contact. So literally it will be like a plug and play system. It's gonna be on another level. I'm gonna have interviews with my students, right? My actual coaching students and mentorship students that are anywhere, doing anywhere from 5,000 to 10,000 because I have roughly four or five of those. Um, and I'm also gonna interview my clients, my ex-clients. Now, one thing, if you're in social media marketing, it's not wise to reveal your current clients because 
like it's just an easy way for them to get poached. Um, and like a lot of them actually, as, when you go to the higher level, they don't want um, they don't want the public to know that the, they're actually managing the marketing out that they're outsourcing the marketing. They want people to think that it's insourced. So with a lot of clients, like you literally can't even reveal that you work with them. Um, but all, all the clients that I'm gonna uh, interview, they'll, they would have been previous clients. Um, so you know, I can say whatever the fuck I want, um, and I'm gonna interview them, and I'm gonna bring them on, and I'm gonna show you in the perspective of the person you're selling to, what are the things that they'd want to hear, what are the services that they'd want delivered, what sort of ROI would they want, right? What sort of customer experience would they want? Guys, this thing is gonna be <laughs> on another level. I'm so fucking excited. Woo! Um, as I said, guys, I honestly I haven't had a uh, I haven't had like a solid focused you know, month since probably October, since I went to, I had my business trip in Amsterdam. So excited for January. And then February, I think I'm going to jet off to uh, either Bali or South Africa, take a little bit of a uh, breather, a bit of a break, and uh, and then get back to work after that. So I'm rambling on now. Make sure you subscribe because I say this with usual Iman confidence. I think this is the, the going to be the channel in 2018. I've been, you know, I, I took a little bit of a break last week because my business partner actually flew into London um, and like I took a little bit of a break and I was studying the market and I, <laughs> we're, we're going to crush it guys. Like our, our little fucking family here, um, we're just going to crush it. And like, I, I generally mean that when I say like, the, this is the place to be. This is the channel to be for 2018. I'm going to put out content that no one else has put out. I'm going to have quality that no one else is going to have. I'm going to have, you know, proof of the shit I'm doing in the way that a lot of other people just fake. Um, and yeah, guys, this is, this is going to be the place to be. So make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you hit that little bell. We are doing a live this Saturday, uh, right before I f uh, jet off to Paris with my girlfriend. Um, I'm going to do a live. Uh, and then content next week again. Love you guys. See you.